Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we'll take a look at built-in functions, which you can use to perform specific tasks. And you've already been introduced to quite a few, and we'll cover more in upcoming videos. But in this video, we'll focus on the most important ones. And in addition to that, we'll also learn how to work with modules that you can import into your project to access additional functions and variables beyond the built-in ones. Now, there are various modules available, but just like with functions, we'll focus on the most important ones. So let's dive into the code and see how it works. Let's have a look at some of the built-in functions that Python has to offer. And the first one is absolute function, which takes a number and returns it as a positive number. Then you have the max function, which takes two or more numbers and returns the largest number. Similar to the max function, you also have the min function, which returns the smallest number. Next, we have the power function, which takes two numbers and returns the first raised to the power of the second. Now, optionally, you can provide a third argument, and if you do so, you perform a modular operation on the exponential using the third argument. So, in this case, you do 16 modulus 7, which is 2. You also have the round function, which takes a number and rounds it to the nearest whole number. For example, let's take 2.1 which rounds down to the nearest whole number, which is 2. Now, let's try to round 2.9. And this rounds up to the nearest number, which is 3. Now, let's try to round 2.5. And in this case, Python rounds to 2. And this is because Python follows the banker's rounding rule. And with banker's rounding, the number is rounded to the nearest even number. And in this case, the nearest even number is 2, so it rounds down to 2. Now, let's try rounding 3.5. And here, the nearest even number is 4, so in this case, it rounds up to 4. Now, optionally, you can provide a second argument to specify at which decimal place you want to round. So, let's say you have the number 3.141, and you want to round it to two decimal places. And now, this rounds down to the nearest second decimal, which is 3.14. Now, let's try rounding 3.149, and this will round up to the nearest second decimal, which is 3.50. Now, besides the built-in functions, Python also has a bunch of modules, which also contain many useful functions. And to access a module, you must import it first. And to do that, you need to use the import keyword, along with the desired module name. And the first module we're going to look at is a math module. And by importing it, we now get access to all the variables and functions that are inside this module. And if you go type mat followed by a dot, you can see all the available options in the list. For instance, take a look at pi, and here the letter V stands for variable. So let's pick that one, and let's print it. Now let's try using a function, and the letter F here stands for function. Let's try the factorial, and give it 3 as an argument. Now, if you don't know what this is, it's not a big deal, but it essentially multiplies the number by all the positive numbers that come before it, excluding 0. So, in this case, the factorial of 3 equals 3 times 2 times 1. So, that's where 6 comes from. Now, another way to use these functions is by importing them directly from the module. And to do this, you start with the from keyword, followed by the name of the module you want to import from. Then you use the import statement, followed by the name of the function you'd like to use. And let's go for the square function. And this way you can call the function directly like this. And you import only what you need instead of the entire module. You can also give the function a nickname using the ask keyword. So let's call it square root. And now you can also call it using that name. Now if you need more than one function or variable, you can import them on the same line by separating them with a comma. For example, let's import seal and floor. By using the seal function, you can round the number up. On the other hand, using floor allows you to round down. But keep in mind that with negative numbers, seal rounds to the smallest integer. And floor rounds to the largest integer, giving you minus 3. Now, let's move on to the daytime module, and from daytime, we'll import date. So, let's see what's in there. 
and let's go for today. And this basically returns a date object that has today's date. So let's print it. Now you can create such a date object yourself by using date, parentheses, and inside it you add the year, then the month, and finally the day of the month. Let's print it. Now if you also want to include the time, then you must work with date time instead. So instead of date, you must import date time. And here you use date time instead. And inside the parentheses you add the year, then the month, then the day of the month, then the hour, the minute, and finally the second. Now let's store it in a variable and print it. Now if you don't provide any arguments for the time, then you get the default value, which is midnight. Now datetime is actually an object, and when you print, the object is converted into a string. And this is done using the default format, however you can customize the format if you want to. So let's type the name of your variable, followed by a dot. And you'll see a list of options, and the one you need is trefTime, which expects a format string as argument. And you can use the percentage symbol followed by a letter to use a time unit. So you have Y for the year, lowercase m for the month, lowercase d for the day, h for the hour, m for the minute, and s for the second. And you can format the string just the way you want. And I want to start with a day, with a backslash, the month, another backslash, and finally the year. And then I want a comma there, the hour, a colon, and the minute. And I don't want to use the second. Now let's print the result. And finally, daytime also has a function called now, which returns the current timestamp. Now let's take a look at the time module, which allows you, for example, to pause the execution of the code. So let's start with a print statement that says, pause the execution for two seconds. And from the time module, let's use the sleep function and give it two as the argument. And finally, let's print continue executing and run the code. So as you can see, the last print statement had a two second delay on it. Now you can also measure the time using the time module. And let's measure how much delay we actually had here. And we'll do that by defining a variable called start and from the time module, we'll use the time function, which basically returns the current timestamp. Then it sleeps for two seconds. Now let's define another variable called end and use the time function once again, and also a variable called duration, which we set to end minus start, which as a result gives you the total time it took. Another interesting module is random, which is used for generating random numbers. So from random, let's import random, which generates a random decimal number between 0 and 1. Let's print it. And if you want a number between 0 and 10, you can multiply it by 10. Similarly, if you want a number between 0 and 100, you can multiply it by 100. Now, if you want a random integer within a specified interval, you can also use randint. So let's import randint in set. And randint requires two arguments to specify the interval. For instance, let's say we want to generate a random number between 0 and 100. Now let's move on to the input function, which allows you to ask the user to enter something. First, let's define a variable called text and call the input function, which takes one argument, namely a string. And when the input function is called, we want enter a text to be displayed. Now, whatever the user enters will be stored in the text variable. And we want to print the following. And concatenate it with the text variable. Now let's run the code and enter some text. Now let's define another variable called number. And for our prompt string, let's set enter a number. And finally multiply the number by itself 
and wrap it with a print statement. Let's run the code and enter number six. Now this leads to a type error and this is because the input function receives the input as a string and multiplying a string by a string is not possible. So here we first need to change the type to int or float. Let's run the code. Enter 6 once again. And with that, the issue is now solved. The next function we're going to look at is the print function. And we often use the print function. And each time we've been giving the function a single argument. But the function can also take zero or more than one argument. For example, you could have multiple string arguments. For instance, Python, Java, and JavaScript. And by default, these will be separated by spaces. And after the last argument, so JavaScript in this case, it will move on to a new line. And the reason why the function behaves this way is due to the two parameters of the print function. And one of them is sep, which is by default set to a space. And the other one is end, which is by default set to a backslash and the letter n. And this is how you can go to the next line. But you can change these parameters to your liking. For example, let's separate the words with a comma and a space. And set the end to a comma, followed by a space, three dots, and then a new line. Now let's have a look at the format function, which allows you to format a value within a string. And you do that by placing a placeholder into the string. So let's say programming in. And let's add a placeholder here. Now you can call the format function on the string and let's pass it the string Python. And as you can see, Python is now placed into the placeholder. Now you can also have multiple placeholders. For example, my name is followed by two placeholders. And as arguments for the format function, pass your first name and last name. Let's print the result. Now, you can also change the order in which the arguments are shown. And you can do that by adding the index number into the placeholder. And I want my last name, so the argument at index 1 to be shown first. And then my first name at index 0. You can also define a variable within the placeholder. For example, the product costs dollar sign price. Now, note that with the format function, you can add the float directly into the string, and you don't need to change its type first. Now, let's try this. And as arguments, pass 7, 11, and 7 divided by 11. And let's print it. Now, there's a shorter way to do all of this. And instead of the format function, you put the letter F in front of your string, and now you can add your argument directly into the placeholder. So we have 7 divided by 11 is 7 divided by 11. Let's print it. And as you can see, you get the same result. You can show an integer as a float by adding a colon and then the letter F. You can also make the decimal part of the float shorter. So let's say you only want two digits after the floating point. Then you can do that by adding the colon and the letter F. But this time you also add a dot with the number 2. And this rounds the number to the nearest second decimal. Now in case you ever want to show a float as an integer, you can use 0F here. Which rounds to the nearest integer which is 1. Now let me show you something else. Let's print the asterisk symbol eight times. And let's use the format function and put the string high inside the placeholder. Now, high contains two characters, so it takes two character spaces. However, you can change this by adding a colon followed by a number. And let's go for eight. And to be able to see it, let's add an asterisk symbol at the end. And as you can see, it takes eight character spaces. Now you can align this to the left. You can also center it. Or align it to the right. 
So this was it for today's video. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video.